Here we go. Let's talk it up. The Canes and uh, the commitments are, I'm not going to say rolling in, but it's a steady pace and the rankings continue to look better for those that are concerned for 2022. Markeith Williams is the 17th rated safety in the country. He's the 28th rated player in the state of Florida, and he's the top 300 player 242, according to the 247 uh, composite. And he is going to wear the orange and green at this point. Yeah, so that's uh, <clears throat> your latest blue chip defensive back commitment uh, from Orlando Evans's own uh, Markeith Williams. And so, uh, you know, a tall, lengthy, rangy safety, 6'1", about 170 pounds, definitely room to add size to his frame. Uh, but the kid's a ball hawk, six interceptions and nine passes defended uh, or broken up, if you will, as a high school freshman. Uh, was area defensive player of the year as a sophomore. Uh, following that, averaged 10 tackles a game as a junior with a broken wrist, so he had the, the big club on his hand uh, to protect the broken wrist and the bones that were healing. So, yeah, you come on the scene as a freshman with six interceptions. You elevate that in our area defensive player of the year as a sophomore. You elevate that and have 10 tackles per game with a broken hand as a junior. You know, this is a, a – I mean, and you just – have all the skills that you need. I mean, like I said, he's tall enough at 6'1", very lengthy. Uh, you know, if you're basketball, you know, uh, drink uh, basketball, NBA draft, drinking game, wingspan, wingspan, wingspan. Uh, you know, if he's 6'1", he has to have a 6'5", 6, 6'6", six, 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 wingspan. I mean, he's long, long arms, you can tell. Uh, and he uses them well. He, he plays, you know, single high, uh, free safety in high school. He covers, you know, all of the ground from, you know, heels at 12, um, you know, in the middle of the field, sideline to sideline between there to 30, 40 yards downfield, uh, breaking up passes, intercepting passes uh, all over the place. And, you know, he's a, he's a blue chip baller, and that's what you want in the secondary. Now you put him with you know, Chris Graves, Kamari Rogers, and Traquan Fegans, your trio of defensive of your quarterbacks. Now you got four guys in the secondary, the shortest one, uh, is Rogers at five eleven? Then you got six uh, six one in Williams and Graves, and six two in Fegans, and three of the four are blue chips. Well, I would say all the four. If you look, if you go by the composite, Graves is a four star athlete. That means all four of your defensive back commitments are blue chip guys. Look, this is what it should be. This is what recruiting at Miami should be like: getting premium guys from all over the country. And you stack them at the same position. Now, I know it looks a little Florida Gators-ish in this class because we have uh, half the class is defensive backs. And, you know, they like to sign, you know, 15 and 17 defensive backs in the class. I don't think that we should go too many more, although there are guys on the radar who have the ability and skill to play here and potential. So we'll see which way we go, um, you know, with the rest of the secondary. Uh, but, yeah, Markeith Williams is a guy who can play here. And to the uh, point on the screen, Mr. HD, UF fans are saying that Markeith Williams wasn't a take at uh, UF. Fine. You know, UF never loses a recruiting battle. Nobody was ever an offer. Nobody was ever a take. They never lost a battle. Anybody that they wanted always went there. They never lose out on anybody. Fine. Whatever. Let them live that delusion. But while they're living that delusion, Markeith Williams is your fourth blue chip defensive back coming to the University of Miami in the 2022 class. Now, that's exactly what you should have, and you stack, again, elite upon elite because you had a couple guys last year, James Williams and Cam Kinchins. You know, unfortunately, there was the Avante Williams situation where he was kicked off of the team because of the allegations of domestic battery and whatnot. And you usually want it to be for graduation, leaving early to the NFL draft. That's why you want to be replacing guys and recruiting over guys and having more blue-chip guys come in. However, I will say, even though this is not a situation, I will not make a lot of that situation. And I don't know whether the allegations are true or false. I, that will be borne out to be true by the investigation, by the whole you know legal system scenario. But in terms of roster building exclusively, and again, I'm not making any judgment about the allegation with Avante Williams. In terms of building the roster, you get Cam Kinchins and James Williams the year after Tay Williams. And then you get Markeith Williams and whoever else they might put in this class this year behind that again. Now you had a guy who's off the roster now. 
that could have been a transfer, that could have been an injury, that could have been, you know, whatever. But with Avante Williams no longer on the roster, now you build Ford to be able to absorb that hit of losing a guy of his caliber and potential from the roster by recruiting guys of the caliber of Kinchins and Williams last year and then Marquise Williams and whoever else they put at, you know, safety with him this year. It's a big get. It's a good get. And if Florida fans, if you, if Gator fans want to feel better about themselves by saying, about lying and saying that he's not a take there, that's perfectly fine. I'm good with it. Come on down, Marquise. See you in uh, Coral Gables.